So welcome back to Brewpig. Last week we left you with a bit of a weld fail that we had happen in one of our fuel tanks at the front. Um, we need to resolve that and make sure that the stainless pipe that we put in um, is rock solid and, uh, and holds pressure. So we've come up with a plan how to attack that. Um, we haven't figured out if it's going to work yet because obviously we need to get stuck in and do that. But um, yeah, we've got a few ideas and we think we can resolve it. So um, so plan plan one for this uh, this bit of work that we're going to do is get in there and get that pipe sorted, make sure the tank itself holds pressure um, throughout that pipe, so the crash bulkhead and that pipe all have to be pressurised and, and uh, pressure tested. Um, and then finally we need to go around and do our three angle grinding on all of our opening accesses. So where we cut the, the, um, the big steel plates out of the hull, when we weld those back in, there's three welds that we need to run around, um, and to do that we need to grind it in a really specific way. So I'm going to show you how we actually prep all of the panels that we grind um, to, in order to weld into the hull. So I'm on a mission to solve um, the hole that blew in the stainless pipe. Um, one of the things I've got to do is get a real good weld all the way around the pipe onto the mild steel. And the mild steel, I'm not happy with how clean it is. Um, like so when I basically we started with rusty mild steel I got on there with the grinding disc because my sandblaster stopped working um, often happens sometimes when the ball valves wear out or whatever stop working um, and I got in there with a grinding disc and cleaned it all up all the steel up and everything um, and then started welding but I'm not I'm still not 100% happy with how clean that steel is I've rebuilt my sandblaster I'm going to get back in there and blast around it so nice sort of inch wide strip all the way around so the mild steel is beautiful and then I'm going to do a decent weld all the way around it um, and uh, yeah, fill up my hole at the same time. So I've got a mirror now, which is something I didn't have yesterday, um, and it's gonna make a difference when I'm filling this hole. So that's my plan. Gonna see if I can get this welded um, now, and then we'll pressure test the pipe. To give you an idea of the transition, so that's your normal steel, sort of rusty, gross, with a bit of red lead paint every now and again, and that's a bit that I've just sandblasted. So there's a huge um, transition going from the crappy old rusty steel to the beautiful white metal. So what I've done here, if I can zoom in here, I'll show you. So this is the pipe that I've welded in. I, I wasn't 100% sure how good my welds are, they're not perfect. Um, it's really difficult to weld where it is just because the access is so awkward. Um, so what I'm going to do now that I've sort of cleaned up both lots of steel, I'm actually just going to run another bead over top just to be really really certain that that's going to seal up. Um, likewise with this one, they're certainly not the prettiest of welds. Um, they're next to impossible to see when you're actually trying to do them. Um, but I'm going to basically put another bead over top of everything just to really um, nuke it and make sure it's not going to weld. Uh, sorry, not going to weld, not going to leak. However, the bit that I'm really happy with so the bit that I was challenged about trying to solve, I think I might have found a solution. So if we zoom right in, sorry, wobbly camera. So there you go, so again, not the prettiest of welds in the world, um, but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get a decent um, seal on a lot of those. I'll probably grind a few bits off and actually run another bead all the way around, just a nice solid bead. Um, and same deal, don't know if you can quite see it, but that one there is the, uh, the uh, come back a bit. That one down the bottom is the opposite end of the original pipe, if that makes sense. So that's actually been sealed up in the coffer dam, which explains why it never worked properly. Um, and we've welded it up on this side as well. So there's there's actually three things stopping that from leaking. There's my weld, there's the, the a plate that they've put on previously, and they've filled the coffer dam with cement. So there's quite a few things stopping that hole from leaking. Um, this one here only has one weld to stop it leaking, so it has to be done right. So at the bottom, which is where I had the problem, there's a whole build up a weld and it's pretty awful. I've ground a fair chunk of it away but there's still a lot there to deal with. Um, so now that I have beautiful clean steel, I'm gonna be able to get a much, much better weld in there. So that's my plan now is to run a nice, hot, beautiful bead all the way around there in one go and um, yeah, hopefully seal that pipe up for good. So when we're welding mild steel to stainless, um, we use a wire called 309 LSI. Um, so it's a great wire, it's basically a stainless steel wire, but it's just a different version of it and it's really good for getting a bond between those two metals. Um, when you weld stainless and mild, the weld line will rust. Even though the wire is a stainless wire, the weld line will rust because you're, you're melting mild steel into that. 
Um, so your stainless part doesn't need to be painted, but the weld itself and all of the mild steel does need to be painted if it's going to be exposed to atmosphere. Um, another trick that we also use on Brewpeak to extend the liners in our MIG welder um, in, the, in the gun and everything is I put a couple of these um, uh, just disposable earplugs, I put them on the line between the roll and where it goes through the feed rollers and into the liner. Um, they bunch up, like they sit like that basically on the um, where it goes into the rollers. Um, but the beauty of it is it kind of wipes the wire as, as it's going through, it wipes all of the surface rubbish off the wire. Um, it's not going to get everything obviously, it's not perfect, but it actually seems to extend the life of the liners and you don't get so much garbage going down your gun. Um, so it's just a, a trick that we use to try and make our welds a bit better on the boat. So I think I've created possibly the ugliest weld on the boat, but god damn this thing is huge and I don't think it's going to leak. Time to pressure test. So there we have it. So that's our, uh, our weld. It's hard to see with the torchlight, but all the way around she's welded. The bottom is pretty horrific um, in terms of like massive beads of weld. Can't really show you this side easily. Um, like that, there you go. So you can see she's fully welded all the way around. That's holding PSI, um, so pressure tests up really beautiful. I'll throw some bubbles on it and just show you. So heaps of bubbles all the way around. So you can see I had the problem down the bottom where it was fluffing up. Let me just clear away that. It runs around the pipe. There you go, you can see there's no like big bubbles or anything forming. Get it heaps of dousing. Wanna be sure. Nothing. So I'm happy with that. And then down the bottom there, that ugly ass circular weld is another one that I had to make sure was holding pressure. Um, so that one there's also holding good. Um, there's no bubbles or anything that come from that one. So overall, absolutely stoked at how this pipe turned out and we don't have to cut into our crash bulkhead again. So we've got heat crossed off the lift so far. Um, all of the stainless pipe work is done. Um, the tank pickup is done. Welding up the old holes done. Sorted out the, the uh, original hole for the crash bulkhead system up the front, that's all sorted. Last thing I have to do on each tank, second to last thing I have to do on each tank, <laughs> um, is cut out these uh, bungs. So it's an internal thread piece of pipe a uh, mild steel pipe that's been welded in on both sides, double continuous weld on both sides. Um, it's basically rusted out, the threads are gone, it's completely stuffed. Um, so I need to take it out and I'm going to weld in a stainless piece of stainless internal thread pipe and then I'll put a stainless bung into it. So I wanted to um, just take a second and thank uh, a few people. So last episode um, there was heaps of comments um, with uh, some really cool ideas as to how to improve what we're doing and so on. Um, so I just wanted to thank a couple of people. So um, there was quite a few people that talked about like filters for our plasma cutter. Um, so I haven't got names for that because there was lots of people sort of saying a similar thing. But um, yeah, thanks for everybody that commented. You know, got, you guys know who you are. Thanks for everyone that's um, commented on putting a, an air filter um, into our plasma system. So we've got a water separator, but we don't have a dryer. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll be getting one of those um, as soon as we can and add that into the system. Um, I also wanted to uh, mention Michael Love. Um, so just uh, really wanted to say thanks to Michael. Um, he sent us in some uh, aluminium tape and a few other things that help us to um, to basically get better welds, um, to avoid splatter and so on. He used it and he showed us sort of how to um, how to basically use the the tape and everything. So um, thanks, Michael. And also um, <laughs> Leif Granberg from Sweden. Um, this was a, a, a dude that. Um, he uh, emailed us off our website and um, he'd rebuilt a 27 metre North Sea trawler. Um, he's made an awesome job of it and uh, yeah, sent us a whole bunch of photos and stuff and, uh, and also offered to send us all of the leftover parts that he's not using for his trawler. Um, so I, I just wanted to say thanks. Um, your boat looked absolutely amazing um, and uh, yeah, really stoked to, to have been able to communicate with you. And finally, I wanted to um, mention a channel, um, Life on the Mold. So Ross uh, is this Aussie bloke, he's about as Aussie as they come. Um, he knows fiberglass, that's his world, and um, yeah, he decided that he was uh, wanting to build a, a catamaran, sort of in the like 40 odd foot range. So he found this mould um, for, for next to nothing on eBay, and, and he brought this you know massive um, catamaran mould down from up north on trucks and so on, and uh, they had to block roads off and everything to get it down into his down to his workshop and everything. And they got it there, and he's pretty much single handedly building this catamaran. Um, it, it's really quite impressive. Um, the last boat we had was glass, so I kind of know. You know what he's doing, and, and I got a rough idea as to what he's uh, what he's got himself into in that. And it's um, a really interesting channel. He's a really decent bloke. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll put a link above me here. Um, if you haven't already seen his channel, check it out. Um, it's quite different to Brewpig, obviously being fiberglass, but um, yeah, he's a really likable guy and and uh, quite fun to watch. So we're prepping the welds for what we call the root weld. Root weld's pretty simple, but it um, it basically is the sole reason why we're able to cut into the side of the hull like this and make um, really great welds when we go to seal it all back up. So if you have a close look at this edge here, so what I've done is I've ground three faces on it. So the middle, you can sort of see a flat that's maybe a, a millimetre or two thick. Um, that's the original line that we cut with the one mil cut off disc. And then I grind a 45 on each edge. So what that means is when I put, and I'll do exactly the same on the plate that's getting welded in. So what that means is we've got a V'd out surface on the top, we've got a one mil gap in the centre here, and then we've got a V'd out surface on the on the bottom. And I'll, um, I'll just draw up a quick diagram and I'll show you why we do it this way. So there's three welds that get done, a root weld and then two capping welds. So I'll show you how that works. So you've got two pieces of steel, and then you've cut between them and then you grind a 45 on each piece of steel. So you're left with this profile here and this is what you have to basically weld together. So the, the first of the three welds, we put a small bead all the way around like this, which is called a root weld. Um, it doesn't really have any strength. It's, it's more than a tack, but not significantly more. It just basically holds the plate in place where we need it to be. Once we've done that, we, we V it out on each side with a grinder so that we get a decent um, penetration down in this weld and then we run one weld there and one weld there and these are called our capping welds. It's these welds that give us the strength and the thickness of these welds is significantly more than the, than the plate of steel. Like, so the, the hull on Brewpeg is six millimetres. This, this dimension here is probably half an inch or 12 millimetres. So, um, you know, you've got significantly more steel than what you took out. So you know it's going to be stronger than what it was. The other side of it is because you've got the three welds, you've got three chances of sealing the, the, the hole in the side of the hull up. So if we were just running one weld around the outside of the boat, um, you, I mean, it's got to be perfect. If, the, if it leaks, your boat sinks, basically. So um, the beauty of this is you get three shots at making it um, spot on. So if you're doing three great welds, there's almost no chance it's going to leak. So um, if you've got a pinhole in one side, almost certainly the other two welds are going to um, you know, completely encapsulate that pinhole so it's not going to go all the way through the hull. Yeah, so that's how we weld the hull back up. So we finally got the, uh, the pipe sorted out and the other issues sorted out for the tank, so they're ready to blast, so looking yeah. forward to that. 
Uh, we wanted to do a special mention. Yeah, so a couple of weeks back, um, a channel called Finding Simon um, did a mention of Brewpeg as one of their favourite channels to watch for under 20,000 subscribers. And uh, anyway, um, it was a, I checked it out, it was an interesting looking channel. He's um, rebuilding a, cat, a Wirram catamaran, I think it is, um, just him and his dog. A nice guy. Yeah, nice guy. So um, we'll chuck a link in the, in the, t up in the corner here. Um, shows you his channel and you can, um, yeah, have a look at it for yourself. So thanks for watching, guys. Cheers. Gonna cry when you're gone